All right, guys, so now we are here in 10.4, looking at biconditionals and definitions. Uh, we may circle back and look at this at the end, but for the sake of time, we're going to jump right into it. So a biconditional is a single true statement that combines the true conditional and the true converse. So we have to have a true conditional and a true converse. So you can write a biconditional by joining two parts of the conditional, the if and only if. We also abbreviate if and only if sometimes with IFF. Um, so let's go ahead and look at this. In problem one, we have a um, statement that is if the sum of the measures of two angles is 180, then the two angles are supplementary. Go ahead, try to think of how could we combine the, up here it says, how could you combine the true conditional and the true converse to make one statement? So pause this, think for a moment. So we see that the converse statement would be if angles are supplementary, then the sum of their measures is 180, and this converse is true, so we form the biconditional by starting by saying two angles are supplementary if and only if they satisfy the given restrictions, which are they, the sum of their measures is 180 degrees. So this is here how we use that if and only if statement. There's no other way that two angles could be supplementary. So looking at our got it here, we have um, the statement is if two angles have equal measure, then the angles are congruent. So start by thinking about what would its converse be and then how can we write that as a biconditional if and only if statement? So when looking at the converse of our statement here, that would be if two angles are congruent, then they have equal measure. So to combine both of those together, two angles would have equal measures if and only if they are congruent, which is true because equal measure and congruent are essentially the same thing. Then I look at the conditional of number one here and see that if I flip the order, it would be if the absolute value of x is three, then x must be three, which is false. And because the conditional is false, or because the um, converse of the conditional is false, that means that I cannot write the biconditional statement because they both were not true. So we know that a biconditional statement combines if p then q and if q then p. So it says p and q go both directions. They are likewise um, kind of like conditional on each other. So uh, here's a little example here. And now let's move on to problem two. So we have the conditional statement of array is a bi, or sorry, we have the um, biconditional of a ray is an angle bisector if and only if it divides an angle into two congruent angles. So we now want to write the two conditional statements that come from this biconditional. So what we see is that our P statement, or our hypothesis, is a ray is an angle bisector. Our conclusion is that ray divides the angle into two congruent angles. So our if P then Q statement would be if a ray is an angle bisector, then it divides into two congruent angles. And our if Q then P, our converse, would be that if a ray divides the angle into two congruent angles, then it would be an angle bisector. All right, so take a moment to pause and think about the got it. Our biconditional is that two numbers are reciprocals if and only if their product is one. So split that up into what is your hypothesis, what is your conclusion, and how would we write the conditional and the converse. So pause the video now. When we come down here and look at these answers for um, the got it, we would say um, if two numbers are reciprocals, then their product is one because here's my hypothesis, two products are reciprocals, or two numbers are reciprocals, sorry, the conclusion is that their product is one. So then I switch the order and if the product of two numbers is one, then they are reciprocals. So there are my two conditionals. And of course, I'm giving away the answer for number four because you can already see it. If x squared is 144, if and only if x is 12 or x is negative 12, then I can flip the order around or I can keep this order, we have a hypothesis and conclusion, and then I flip it and we have uh, if conclusion, then hypothesis, and both of these do hold true still. Take a moment and pause the video to read this over. I'm not gonna read it, but I expect you to. You don't have problem three in your notes, but you wanna take a moment to think about it and say what would be the conditional, what would be the converse of this biconditional? 
or of this definition, sorry. A quadrilateral is a polygon with four sides. So we can write a conditional for this definition. So we could say something like if a figure is a quadrilateral, then it is a polygon with four sides because that's what quad means. It means having four sides. So the converse, we could flip that statement around and say that if a figure is a polygon with four sides, then it must be a quadrilateral. The conditional and its converse are both true. These both make sense. So we can write it as a biconditional, combining them and writing it as an if and only if statement. A figure is a quadrilateral if and only if it is a polygon with four sides. So now when we start to look at if a definition is reversible, you essentially just want to flip the order of the sentence. So a straight angle is an angle that measures 180 degrees. We're missing a degree sign up there. But then if I flip it around, I say, if an angle measures 180 degrees, then it is a straight angle. And that still is true. The reverse of the statement is true. So we can write it as a biconditional saying an angle is a straight angle if and only if its measure is 180. So essentially we replace um, a little bit of this. You can see how we manipulate from the sentence that we had to our new sentence adding in that if and only if. So take a moment to look at five and six and decide to yourself if they are reversible and if it is reversible then we can write a biconditional statement. So I'm going to look at number six first actually so if you didn't pause take a moment to do so. Two angles that form a line, a linear pair, are adjacent. Well, that is not always true because if I try to flip this around, I'd say um, a linear pair is adjacent if, or sorry, angles are adjacent if they form two angles that are a linear pair. Uh, not necessarily always true. So then we look at five, perpendicular bisector of a segment of, is a line segment or ray that is perpendicular to the segment at its midpoint. So I flip it around. A line segment or a ray perpendicular to a segment at its midpoint is the perpendicular bisector. That is true. So we can write that as a biconditional saying that a line segment or a ray is a perpendicular bisector of a segment if and only if it is perpendicular at its midpoint. So again, how we determine a good definition is based on can it be proved wrong? Is there a counterexample? If there's a counterexample, your definition was not specific enough. So when we have um, these four definitions, take a moment, pause the video, and decide which is a good definition and why are the other ones not necessarily good. When we look at these different options, a fish is an animal that swims. Well, that's not very detailed, let alone if I try to turn it around, an animal that swims is a fish. There's lots of animals that swim that are not fish. B, saying rectangles have four corners, well corners is not very specific, and all quadrilaterals have four corners. So squares can have four corners, everything else. So again, think about the converse of the statement if I flip it around. Giraffes are animals with very long necks. Well, very long, that's very vague long is not defined, nor do we know what very long means. And so D is the best definition. A penny is a coin worth one cent. A coin worth one cent is a penny. It's reversible. It makes sense. And a coin is only a penny if and only if it is worth one cent. So it makes sense that D is your good definition. So in our part four, got it here. We're given the definition that a square is a figure with four right angles. Now while this definition is true, think about reversing it. A figure with four right angles is a square. Well, I can find a counterexample to that because a rectangle has four right angles and it is not a square. So therefore this definition is not a good definition. It's not reversible and therefore we cannot write a biconditional statement. So we say it's not good. We look at B, it asks us how can we rewrite the statement obtuse angles have greater measures than acute angles so it turns into a good definition, an actual viable definition. So pause the video for a second and think about what other details do we need. So this whole statement here, greater than acute angles, is not a good statement. So that's the statement that we want to replace. So go ahead and think about what can I replace that with. Well we could say that obtuse angles have measures and we know what the measure is. It's greater than 90 and less than 180. So we could just say measures between 90 and 180. So then think about in our practice here are seven and eight good definitions. A compass is a geometric tool. 
and 8, perpendicular lines are two lines that intersect to form right angles. So think about both of those. Are they good definitions or are they missing any information? Always think about when we reverse this statement. Can we say a geometric tool is a compass? Well, yes we can, but that's not always true because a geometric tool could also just be a straight edge or it could be a protractor or anything else. So this is not a good definition. But number eight, perpendicular lines are two lines that intersect to form right angles. So if I look at two lines that intersect to form right angles are perpendicular lines, that is true. And since the converse holds true, we know that this is a good definition. And I could write the biconditional that perpendicular lines are, or lines are perpendicular if and only if they intersect to form right angles. That is all that I have for today. So please make sure that all of this makes sense and that you let me know if you have any issues on any of this. Uh, please make sure that you've worked through the entire Pearson module, not just watched my video, and go ahead and work on the practice so that you'll be ready for class. Thanks and have a great day.